So welcome to video problem 9. Uh, here we are uh, looking at the uh, Laplace equation in uh, cylindrical coordinates. Specifically from the known electric potential difference we will use Laplace equation to derive electric potential fields and charge for a coaxial cable capacitor. Please note that this is an approach which is opposite to the one we took in video problem 6. So uh, here is the well-known coaxial cable capacitor configuration. So we have uh, a coaxial cable uh, which has a length L and it has an inner conductor uh, which has a radius A and the outer conductor which has a radius B. Uh, the inner conductor is kept at a constant potential V0 while the outer conductor is grounded and thus have a potential uh, equal to zero. The space in between the two conductors of our coaxial cable capacitor uh, is composed of simple and uh, source-free dielectric material with permittivity epsilon so that we have this simple relationship between the D and E fields inside of the capacitor. On the side over here you can see uh, the cross-sectional view of our configuration. Because of the circular cylindrical symmetry, and uh, you can view all the details behind, uh, behind the consequences of uh, cylindrical symmetry in video problem 2 and video problem 5, uh, the induced uh, surface charge densities on the surface of your our inner and outer conductors will be uniformly, uh, uniformly distributed. Moreover, we will assume a uniform distribution of charge along the length of our coaxial cable uh, capacitor. Uh, the uniform distribution of charge is illustrated uh, on the cross-sectional figure uh, over here. And this essentially uh, means that when we introduce uh, our x, y, z coordinate system uh, with the associated uh, cylindrical uh, coordinate system where we have the radial uh, coordinate and the phi coordinate and the z coordinate as shown on the figure, the electric field uh, will uh, have uh, the direction as indicated on the figure, so it will be uh, radially directed and its magnitude will only uh, depend on the radial coordinate. This will also be the case for the D field and as a consequence the potential in this particular case will only be a function of the distance uh, R uh, to the observation point inside of our uh, capacitor. So in this problem, uh, what we are doing is that we have assumed uh, a potential difference between the two conductors. From the known potential difference, we should be able to determine the potential at any point inside of our coaxial cable capacitor. Then uh, this potential will give us the electric field. Then we will be able to get the D field. From the D field, we should be able to determine the induced surface charge densities on inner and outer conductors and from those we can determine the total charge in Coulomb which is induced on inner and outer conductors and finally we will be able to calculate the capacitance by taking the ratio of the total charge and the assumed potential difference. So you can see that this is an approach which is opposite to the one we took in video problem 6 where we actually started by assuming a total charge on inner and outer conductors. So here is our configuration or the cross-sectional view of our configuration. The objective is to determine the potential uh, distribution in our dielectric and our dielectric is uh, free of any charges so the relevant equation is of course Laplace equation that you can see here and uh, since we are working uh, with cylindrical coordinates, uh, this would be the Laplacian uh, operator in a cylindrical uh, coordinate system. Our potential uh, does not vary as a function of phi and z, so these two derivatives, they will be equal to zero. So what you get from your Laplace equation uh, is the expression that you can see here. And this is of course the same uh, as the one that you can see to the right. All we have done is that we have of course uh, 
multiply with R so we get the result that you can see here what you can see is that the potential is hidden inside here so there is one derivative and another derivative with respect to R so you would have to integrate this equation twice with respect to R to recover the potential so let's try to integrate uh, for the first time with respect to R on both sides the left hand side will give us uh, the expression here and the right hand side will give us an arbitrary integration constant then we can move uh, R uh, from left to right to arrive at the expression here and then again integrate with respect to R uh, on both sides the left hand side is our potential the right hand side is our previous constant C1 times the natural logarithm of R plus another arbitrary integration constant C2. So this is our potential in uh, the dielectric that you can see and uh, we see two integration constants which in fact are to be determined by the boundary conditions which are shown to the right. So the potential here will have to equal V0 uh, at the boundary um, or surface of the inner conductor where R is equal to A and it will have to recover zero uh, at the outer uh, conductor which is at R equal to B. So this will give you two equations with two unknowns to determine your uh, integration constants C1 and C2 and then you would be uh, able to arrive at the following expression for the potential that I have also shown uh, down here. So this is the result for the potential uh, at any uh, distance uh, in your dielectric material between uh, the two conductors of our coaxial cable. Knowing the potential, we can take the negative gradient of the potential, which in this case will reduce to the expression here, to arrive at this result for the electric field intensity because the material uh, in our coaxial cable is simple. This relationship here will of course give us the D field which will be the expression uh, shown next. Now the knowledge of the D field uh, will also allow us to determine uh, the surface charge density induced on this surface of the inner conductor as well as on the surface of the outer conductor. Here I will uh, tell you how to calculate whatever is induced uh, on the surface of the inner conductor and this will be uh, done by means of the boundary conditions. <coughs> so we are using uh, this general form of the boundary conditions which basically states uh, that the normal component of the D field is discontinuous uh, by uh, this amount which corresponds to free uh, surface charge density. So this is uh, the medium, or sorry, the field in medium 1 evaluated at the boundary. This is the field in medium 2 evaluated at the boundary. This is the unit vector pointing from medium 2 to medium 1. And this is the uh, free surface charge density at such a boundary. So to alleviate solving the problem, I introduce this uh, designation for the two media. Assume that the uh, dielectric is medium 1 and our conductor is medium 2. In this case the unit normal vector will ju be just this uh, uh, R unit vector that you can see here. The field inside the conductor which is our field D2 is of course equal to 0 and the field in medium 1 is the field that we have derived up here. That field will have to be evaluated at the boundary where R is equal to A and this is our radial unit vector. It's then easy to block everything in the boundary condition and, ad and arrive at this expression for the induced free surface charge density. Note that this is simply the normal component of this D field evaluated at the boundary where R is equal to A, which is why you can see A uh, in this term over here. This surface charge is uniformly distributed, so if you multiply it with the surface area of the inner conductor, which is 2 pi A times L, you will get the total charge in Coulomb, which is induced on the surface of the inner conductor. When we know this total charge, we can divide it with the assumed potential difference to arrive at the expression for the capacitance of our coaxial cable. 
This is, of course, the same result as the one we have derived in video problem 6, but there we have started by assuming the total charge plus Q and minus Q on the two conductors. Here we have determined it by assuming the known potential difference between inner and outer conductors and working our way all uh, the way up uh, to this derived capacitance. So this essentially uh, completes uh, the solution of uh, our coaxial uh, cable capacitor problem in terms of Laplace equation. As usual, we have some uh, tasks for you. Uh, we would like uh, you to compare carefully the solution of this problem to that in video problem 6. Moreover, we would like uh, you to determine the surface charge density induced on the outer conductor. And as a hint, you can make use of the outward unit normal vector and media designations on this figure that we have included here. So now you are supposed to determine whatever is induced uh, on the surface of the outer conductor. Let the dielectric be medium 1 and let the outside be medium 2. So in this case, the unit normal vector will point in the negative radial direction. Moreover, please determine the total charge which is induced on the outer conductor. Thank you very much for your attention.